Now, the purpose of this video is to show you all the different ways we can control volume in Reaper. And we're going to start from the top down, from the most macro level to the most micro level. So, I have a project in front of me here with a vocal, some drums, a bass, and guitars. And I have a folder up here with all these tracks in it. And up here, we have a master track. Let's see what it sounds like now. Run a few miles down a desert road. Stare too long at a cheap wood rose. It's fixing something that's been broken. So we're going to start off from the top with the master track. And if you don't see your master track, we'll go up here to the view menu and choose the master track. We could hide it or view it right here. And by default, we don't usually see it, but all our tracks are going through it. As you can see the level right here. And that's the first place we could adjust our volume. We can make it lower or higher right here. Run a few miles down a desert road. So if your mix is too loud or too low, you can adjust it on the master fader. And we can also create envelopes to automate the master fader. So if I choose it and type V, we'll see an envelope right here. I could hold down shift to create points and fade it out and fade it in. Or we could draw in points, hold on control on the PC, command on the Mac, and just draw it in like this. Run a few miles down a desert road. Or we could automate it by moving the fader. Go to the envelopes and change the automation mode to either right, latch, or touch, and just move the fader to write in some automation. And that's going to play back afterwards. Run a few miles down a desert road. Stare too long. So that's the most top level volume adjustment we can make. Now, the next level is dealing with our groups. In Reaper, they're called folders, although you could create buses if you want. But all these tracks right now are going through this folder or this folder track. So if I mute it, we're not going to hear it. And we can adjust the volume of the folder either here or I put my mixer over here. So if I select the track, I can adjust it with this bigger fader by moving the mixer to the left side. So I can adjust the entire mix or this group from here. Run a few miles down a desert road. And again, just like with the master fader, we can automate it by choosing it right here, switching the mode to right, latch, or touch, and just move the fader to draw in some automation. Run a few miles down a desert road, stare too long at a cheap wood rose. And that automatically creates an envelope, which we could redraw, control on the PC, command on the Mac. Just draw in some automation or draw in points by holding down shift and adjusting it from here. Now the next level is the basic track level. Again, I have the vocal right here. So you can adjust the volume just for the vocal by adjusting it here or selecting the track and doing it with the bigger fader. Run a few miles down a desert And again, just like with the folder track, we can create some track automation. We can select it, type V, which creates an envelope, which we could draw in, create points, or automate it by changing the automation mode to right, latch, or touch, and adjusting it either here or here. 
And we see the automation we wrote in the envelope down here. Now we could trim this envelope by switching the automation mode back to trim read. Then we're still going to hear this envelope. Run a few miles down a desert road, stare too long. But we're not going to see our fader move as we could use this to trim it. We could bring it down right here or on the fader, and it's going to trim everything we're hearing over here. Run a few miles down a desert road, stare too long. So we're still hearing the envelope, but we're trimming it or adjusting it afterwards using our fader or our knob right here. But we could also trim it with a different envelope. Let's put it back to zero, and we're still hearing this envelope. Go to our envelopes and choose, besides the volume envelope, the trim volume over here. Choose it. We get another envelope down here, which we can adjust on top of this one, basically trimming this envelope. Let's create some points by holding down Shift and fade it out and fade it in. But it's still going to play back this envelope, and we can still trim all of it from here or here. So we're still hearing this envelope and this envelope combined. But we could also do this with automation items. Let's delete this one. Let's create an automation item for this envelope, or this section of this envelope. Hold on Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, and just drag it from here to here. Now this envelope, or this section, is an automation item, which we can move like this. But we could also draw another one on top of it to trim it. Just draw another one on top of it. Now we have two envelopes at the same time, the old one and this one. So again, we could draw on top of this one, or just fade it out and in, and we're going to hear both at the same time, this envelope and this one, and still trim everything, either here or here. Run a few miles down a desert road, too long at a but if you want to see the result on our fader, just switch the automation mode to read. Then we can't trim it over here, but we could see what's happening. So using automation items, we could trim one envelope with another. Now there's another envelope we should know about. And that's this one right here, volume pre effects. If we choose this one, it creates an envelope down here, but this envelope is pre or effects on the track. So if you have a compressor or a limiter or a gate on this track, everything we do in this envelope is happening before those effects. And that's helpful if we want to tweak what's going in to our effects. For example, let's zoom in to the beginning. Let's say this phrase is too loud. We could draw it in a bit lower, and notice we see the change in the waveform. So this note's going to be lower, and it's going to hit the effects lower. Run a few miles down a we do the same thing with the F sound over here. Maybe it's too loud, bring it down, and it's reduced before it hits our effects. And we could see it in the waveform. So it's really helpful for fixing volume things early in the process, as we can see them in the waveform, and it's all happening before our effects. Now we could also adjust the volume of our items, which is also pre-effects. If we put our cursor right up here, see how the cursor changes? 
letting us know we could adjust the volume of this item. We could drag it down to make it quieter or bring it up. And if we split our items, create some splits, we could adjust each phrase separately. Make this one lower and this one. And we could do this at the top of our track, or we could do it in the middle. If we go to our preferences and go down to appearance on the media and change the item volume handle to the center of the item. So now we can make the same adjustment in the middle of our items. Just grab this line and readjust the volume of each one of our items, which is really helpful for splitting our items and treating each section separately. And again, this is pre effects, so you can see it on the waveform. So we can see exactly what we're doing. And if you don't want to do it with lines, we can get rid of the handle and choose a volume knob. And now instead of grabbing a handle up here or here, we get a knob up here, which behaves the same way. Make it lower or louder to adjust the volume of our items. And again, this is pre effects. Now we could also adjust the volume of our items just by double clicking and adjusting it in the media item properties. Right over here, there's a volume knob, bring it down, hit OK, and adjust the volume of our item. Double click it, readjust it here, and change the volume on each item separately. But this will also work separately for takes. Let's say we have three takes of the vocal, take one, two, and three. We could adjust their volumes separately with the media item properties. We could double click this and adjust it here, hit OK. That only affects that take. This take is different. Double click it to adjust this one differently. So each take can be balanced later by using the media item properties. And we could also use take envelopes. We could right click, go to take, choose take volume envelope, and we get an envelope just for this take. Hold on shift and create some points and readjust them like this. And it just affects that take or draw them like this. And as you can see, the take envelope is also pre effects. So we see the result in the waveform right here. So each one could have a separate take envelope. Completely separate from each other. But if you're not using takes, you can still use the take volume envelope. You can still select our item, right click it, go to take, and choose take volume envelope, and it'll behave like an item envelope because we only have one take. And again, we could draw it in and it's pre fader, so we see the waveform. We can create points. Or just bring it up and down from here. And maybe fade it out over here. So we created a separate envelope for this item. Now going back a bit, there's a few other things I want to mention. If you've already written some automation, as we can see right here. Run a few miles down a desert road. Stare too long at a cheap wood rose. It's fixing something that's been broken. We could trim that automation by writing it again on a different envelope. We can go up here to actions, show action list. And if we type into the filter, trim envelope, we can see a few actions that'll help us with this. We could toggle the track trim envelope visible right here. And then it shows up. Then we can swap it with the regular volume envelope. And it goes right down here. And it's going to play back the same way as both of these envelopes exist in the same signal flow on our track. But now we can write automation to this envelope and basically trim this one. So if we go above zero, it'll raise this envelope. And if we go below zero, 
it'll lower this envelope. So let's put a rotamation mode back to touch. And now we can write more automation and it's just gonna trim this envelope. Run a few miles down a desert road. Stare too long at a cheap wood rose. It's fixing something that's been broken. And again, we're now hearing both envelopes combined. And if we want to blend them together, go back to the action list and choose. Apply trim envelope to volume envelope, which is going to combine both of them together so we can see the result. Run it and change this envelope to combine both of them before and after. So now we do that process again and keep trimming this envelope over and over. Toggle it again so we see both, swap them. So this envelope is moved to the trim envelope and then trim on the main one. Run a few miles down a desert road. Stare too long at a cheap wood rose. It's fixing something that's been broken. Now we can combine them again by choosing apply trim envelope to volume envelope. And we go back to one envelope, combining each pass as we write them. So in that way, we get true trim automation. We can automate our tracks and still trim them indefinitely. Now there's one other thing I want to mention. If we go to this button right here on each envelope, we could trim our envelope or tweak it so we could bring it down or up based on what we want that envelope to do. If it's too loud, bring it down. If it's too low, bring it up. So instead of trimming the whole thing or grabbing it over here, we can simply bring it down to the level we want and even hear it in real time. Run a few miles down a desert road. Stare too long at a cheap road. It's fixing something that's been broken. So in that way, we're still keeping our envelope, but we're adjusting it or trimming it on the fly or while stopped, lower or louder. So as you can see, there's a whole bunch of different ways of controlling volume in Reaper. So that's pretty much it. That's controlling volume in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.